Welcome to Excel 2010 Security. I'm Trainer Lori. Why bother with security in Excel? Sometimes you just want to lock your cells so you don't accidentally change them. But also you want to protect them so other people can't go into places, cells, that you don't want them to go into. So you can lock your cells so that your cursor jumps just from cell to cell that you want them to have access to. You can protect it so others can view it but not make changes. In fact, there's going to be six options we'll look at today. But essentially, it's to keep others from changing data in a workbook or worksheet. The first option we're going to look at is through Windows Explorer. This is not in Excel, so it's stronger, it's more um, more secure than doing it right in Excel. You'll find it into Properties, right-click on your file, and you'll see Properties. There's two tabs, the General tab. In the General tab, you have the option of making it read-only. And this doesn't give you an option. Um, it simply says, would you like to save it as something else because it is read-only, which is nice. I'm going to show you the other option in Excel. And then the second tab is the Security tab. This is a lot more complex, but you can go in and choose who you want to have access to what. And so you can choose who. You can add a user, you can remove users, and you can determine how much access they have. Our second option is in Excel. It's under File, Save As. And if you look at the tools, down next to Save, there's a Tools drop-down, and the third option is General Options. In there, it gives you three options, uh, actually four, so we'll look at all of them. The first one is always create a backup. That's when uh, your server is crashing all the time. It's a good idea to have a backup, but we'll look at the, the other three after that. Whenever you put a password on, you'll always get this m message saying, if you lose it or forget it, you will not be able to get into the document, so please write it down. Okay, our first option that we want to look at in here is the password to open. That means if I go to open the file, it will say it's protected and I must put in a password. If I don't have the password, it will uh, my only option will be to cancel. I won't be able to get into it at all. That is if you do not want anybody else having access to it, or maybe only one other person and you give them the password. That means they can't open it. This would be for proprietary or personal confidential information. You don't want them uh, anybody else to see. The second option, and we will not use both of these on the same document, you pick one. And that would be a password to modify. That means I want people to look at it, sure, no problems, but I just don't want you making changes to it. And again, you can keep the password to yourself or you can give it to other people and just have them have access to making modifications. Otherwise, it will only open as read-only. So you can see that that actually comes up as the option. Now, if we say read-only recommended, that simply means that it's rec recommending that you open it as a read-only document uh, so that you don't accidentally overwrite it. So, for example, it's your own document and uh, you just are afraid that you might accidentally overwrite it. For example, my training documents. I may not want to be able to make changes in them. I just want to be able to open them, show them, and then close them again without saving. And so uh, this just reminds me that it should be read-only. But people can overwrite it, so it's not a, a really secure option. Our third option is to protect or lock the worksheet. And now, for example, let's say that um, if you hit tab, your cursor should go to the right, correct? That's why I have a little right arrow there. Yet this one goes down. And that's because all the other cells are locked and my cursor will only take me to the cells that are unlocked. And by default, all cells are always formatted as locked. So what we would need to do then is to unlock the ones that we want to have access to. To do that, we'll go under Home, Protection, Protect Sheet, or if you're like me, you prefer the Control 1 option. And this is under our Format Cells dialog box. And you're, I'm sure you've been in Number, Alignment, uh, Font, Border, Fill before, but maybe you've never really played in Protection because if you're in here, you thought it maybe it didn't work. Well, that's because all cells are always formatted as locked. Now, we do have the option to hide cells. That means that it's hiding the formula. It will not appear in the formula bar. So, the first step is to choose what cells we want to unlock. Remember, they're all locked by default. But please note that it says locking or hiding formulas has no effect until you protect the worksheet. That's why it seemed to not be doing anything. Well, it really is. In this case, we want to unlock these cells. 
So uh, the cells that we want people to have access to is simply the quantity. We, they, don't, they don't get to change the price or the formulas. So we say unlock these. Then we go to step two. This is kind of like putting a key in a lock. Uh, putting a key in a lock really doesn't do anything. It just said, if I were to turn the key, then I would lock it. And so the step one is simply putting the key in the lock, and that is uh, formatting the cells that we want to be locked or unlocked. But now we're actually going to turn the key. So under Review Protect Sheet, we choose uh, what kind of protection we want. Now one of your options is to put a password on it. And uh, that would be useful if a lot of people that you work with know how to get in here and change it. I have found, though, that most people don't have a clue. <laughs> so uh, I can protect it and not have to put a password on it because they still wouldn't know how to unprotect it. So you have to know who, uh, what kind of users you're working with. Uh, would they have access to um, figuring this out or if it would be just uh, over their heads? And then you get to choose what you want them to have access to. By default, you'll have both select locked and unlock cells. I like to turn that one off if I only want them to be able to select unlock cells. And if they try to modify it, if they try to do something that it isn't uh, allowed uh, based on what I've given them access to, it'll tell you. It's protected and therefore read-only. It does tell you how to modify it. So if your readers, if your users are good readers, they could probably figure it out. Option number four is to protect the workbook. Now, there's only really two reasons to come in here if I want to lock it for structure or for windows. In other words, I want the size or position of the worksheet window to stay put. For example, I want it only on half a screen, or I want it uh, down at the bottom right corner of the screen. Uh, so it would actually lock that. Uh, or if you want to lock the worksheet functions. Now, for example, I uh, have right-clicked on here, and you can see that I can't insert, delete, and it's all grayed out, right, because it is locked. And you can see the window options are, except for arrange and hide, everything else is, is um, grayed out. So that's what protecting the workbook would do. Our fifth option is to protect and share the workbook. Uh, when you do that, it allows you to share with other people. You know, you must uh, close it and open it again. Uh, you can share it with other people, and that means they can all work on it at the same time. In fact, you can even track the changes and create a worksheet, uh, that, uh, it's called a change report, that will show you what changes have been made, which is very useful if you're going to have multiple people using it at the same time. This is uh, co very complex, and I have a whole training just on how to use uh, the shared workbook option. And our sixth option is to allow users to edit ranges. Now we saw at the very beginning that we could do this in Windows Explorer, and you could uh, do it um, uh, for uh, large groups of people. But here you can actually go in uh, and not just have large groups, but you can have one or two people have access to just a portion of your uh, spreadsheet. For example, a budget. And you only want them to have access to their portion of the budget. And so you can uh, create a new and give it a name. Now this range name will not mimic any range name that you already have in the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Keep that in mind. So if you've already named your ranges, you will have to redo it here. Um, and then uh, also choose a reference. You can use your collapse button to reference it and then give it a password. Then you hit permissions and that's when you can go through and add people and say what they, what they have, uh, whether they can uh, edit the range with or without a password. So they, uh, you can assign a person to a range, and then that's all that they can change. Then you would want to um, uh, make sure you protect the sheet. But please note, while you're in the Allow Users to Edit Ranges, you do have the option to paste those permissions into a new workbook. So you can copy and paste, uh, and because those permissions might take a while to set. Key points. Choose the one that's appropriate for you. Don't try to use them all. Uh, choose to... Uh, choose or unlock what you don't want protected. Remember, by default, they're uh, all locked. And then write down your passwords or else you might forget them. Thanks. We'll see you next time.